that God giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Jesus, we celebrate you. We celebrate you for what you have done for the church. For what you have done for every one of us, counting us worthy to be partaker of your resurrection. Lord, we give you praise because we are in the house today, Lord, to rejoice this Easter morning. We return glory and praises to you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, I pray that as we look into your word this morning, and Lord, as we celebrate today, I ask, Lord, that the power of resurrection shall bring up a lifting in every aspect of our lives and destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. I want to congratulate you for witnessing the Easter 2023. We thank God that we were part of Easter celebration last year and we are privileged to be alive again today. May his name be praised forever in the name of Jesus Christ. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating two things on the occasion of today. The first is that the Savior, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for us. And the second is that he rose from the dead for us. Those two things are very, very critical in the faith 
that we all hold, which is called the Christian faith. That Jesus Christ died. It is very, very significant. There are a lot of religious people who did not, they believe that Jesus came, he was born, but they believe that he did not die. And if Jesus did not die, the Bible says there is no redemption. Because without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. And if Jesus did not resurrect, the Bible says that we are still in our sin. Because the power of resurrection will not be put to work. But because Jesus Christ died and rose again. And so, those of us will believe that on the last day, there is resurrection. Even where we are, that the power of resurrection <clears throat> is still at work in our individual lives. That whatever is dead in us can come to life. Because the Bible says, if the spirit <clears throat> that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if the same spirit dwell in us, <clears throat> that this same spirit will quicken our mortal body. Our Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 24. The gospel according to Saint Luke chapter 24. Are you there? Let it be projected. And I want us to read together. Just the first eight verses. <clears throat> Are we ready? Shall we go on? One to go. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, <clears throat> and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not heir, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men, and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remember his words. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. And they remember his word. I'm speaking on the resurrection. The resurrection. We're going to look at the significance of the resurrection. The first thing we'll see that the story that surrounds the death of Christ. Jesus Christ came as the savior of the world. The Bible says he was betrayed into the hands of sinners. Because it is written. It is written. That he's going to die, it is written. <clears throat> Behold the lamp of God that took away the sins of the world. It is written. Somebody must show him, must betray him. <clears throat> it is written. But the name of Judas Iscariot was not written there. Hallelujah. You know, whatever is written is bound to come to pass. But it left for you either to be positive involved, positively involved in what is written or you are negatively involved. Peter what he did it has been predicted by Jesus Jesus said Peter before the call crew three times you are going to deny me because he has been saying Lord don't worry I'm ready to die with you I will never disappoint if everybody run away from you I will not run away and Jesus said before the call crew three times, you will deny me. I think um, 
before the day break, cock has to crow three times. Do we know that? I know, you know, when you read something in the Bible, it looks strange. The cock that crow, crows, she cock crows, and yeah, the crows, which one? Praise God. <laughs> Where did you like? God say the cock that shout. <laughs> now, when the cock crows in Nigeria, cock oko, the same cock, we also crow the same time in America. In South Africa, that cock will crow. If it is not a Greek, if it is the neighbor, you know, it will crow. So it doesn't matter. And in those days, our father, when there was no time, when there was no wristwatch, when there was no clock, what they used to regulate their movement and the day is the crowing of the cock. So when the cock crows, the cock crows around 12, I mean, around the... Um, I've, I follow it one time that at least I was able to, uh, to witness to. The cock will crow when it is, when you are cross, crossing from 12 midnight, when it is also around um, 2 a.m., the cock will also crow. When it's around 5 o'clock, the cock will also crow. Now, you can see that the trial of Jesus that you witnessed that night the trial of Jesus shouldn't be in the night but it was a kangaroo court praise God it was a kangaroo judgment everything was done in that night right from the high priest to Pilate everything was done in the night and within those period before the cock crew that three times Peter denied the master he said I did not know him now, the sin of Peter is as serious as the sin of Judas Iscariot. Is somebody following me? To deny the Savior, to deny the man that you ate with, to deny the person that you follow for a period of three and a half years, to say, I never knew him. And somebody said, ah, you are like them, you are a Galilean. Eh? He said, no, I don't know him. Another girl came and said, ah, Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter. You are one of them. You know, when we come for, you know, Sunday school or whatever. And he said, Madam. So Peter did not know when he was calling a small lady, Madam. Woman. He said, Woman. Don't put me into trouble. I don't know him. And somebody, some people say, Ah, we are sitting down here. Number one, Peter was a strange person where they were all warming themselves with the fire. It was a strange place to be. They have never met him in such an environment. And I said, look, we have been seeing you. Even the, your language betrays you. The way we are joking, we are talking, we are jesting, we are doing so many things. You kept quiet. You are too, your quietness is suspicious. And once in a while, some of the answers you are giving, you don't know him. You are a Galilean. Your language betrays you. You see, when you want to when you want to uh, compromise, many a times the environment, people, the environment testifies against you. So many things testifies against you. Because you don't fit in properly. That is the problem of backsliders. Backsliders don't fit in properly and they, they want to now try to measure up, they will mess up. Hallelujah. I say Hallelujah. Go and look at when the backslider wants to do makeup. He so makeup will be terrible. Praise God. He's not, he's not been doing serious makeup now. He wants to do it now to say, I belong. People that are into that particular, they will make jest of her and say, look at you. You are just like a gareta. You are just like a masquerade. Praise God. If they want to do something, they want to, they want to show, but the environment is testifying against them. Now, you see, when you find yourself in a situation that you are forcing yourself to belong, watch it. You are forcing yourself, you know, for adaptation, watch it. They said, your language betrays you. I said, I don't know him. He was swearing. Peter was swearing that he did not know him. And the cock crew, and he remembered. Praise the Lord. And Jesus, in the judgment or look back, and their highs met. And Peter went out and began to weep. 
Bible says he wept bitterly. When we are looking at Easter celebration, yes, it's a day of joy, but it's a day of reflection. It's a time to look at ourselves and say, is there a way we are living our life and we need to have sober reflection? We need to repent and let our repentance be genuine. We need to see where we have betrayed the master. Where we have disappointed the savior. And we need to tell God and say, God, I'm sorry. It is either our repentance is the, like that of Peter. Who received forgiveness. Or our repentance is the repentance of Judas Iscariot. How many of you know that Judas also repented? He repented. But you see, that repentance is called, it's not repentance, he regretted. Praise God. Instead of it, it looks like repentance. The money he collected, he took back. Because he never knew that what happened to Jesus would happen. He thought it would disappear. It was not just a cheap way to make money. You know, there are times we get involved in some things and let me make fast money. Uh, I know that it's not going to be. Hallelujah. Now, don't sell your conscience. Don't sell who you are. You are more valuable than money. You are more valuable than money. Eh? Praise God. Don't do Yahoo. And I think the slang for YP is Yahoo Plus. Abby, don't do Yahoo Plus. What you are going to gain and you will not spend in peace, don't get involved in it. Peter got the, uh, sorry, Judas got the money. But the money was useless in his hand. Because money cannot buy peace. Money cannot buy peace of mind. Money cannot buy assurance. Money cannot buy, you know, you know, future for you. Look at all the people that have the money, stole the money and they do it and things like that. Look at the way their children are handing. Look at things that are befalling them. Look at it at times said now they, that the money is useless to them. Praise God. I heard of a general who has ruled us before that today, you know, he's on the wheelchair. He cannot even attend functions outside the game. He's still alive. That his children don't stay in the house. The mansion with all the, all the, uh, the rooms and all the flats, the children, when they come around, they don't stay in that house because daddy is smelling. They cannot cope with smelling daddy. Praise God. Are you listening to me? If money can buy life, he has money to buy it. Now you see, because you are still looking for money, that's why money is important to you. Some people, money is useless to them. Because the money cannot give, give them peace. Judas got 30 pieces of silver. It's not a small money. It's not bronze. It is silver. Silver coin. Because he said, look, don't worry, I'm going to sell him for it to you. Is it to, just to show him? I'm going to show him. And so he got the money. He got the money. But all that played out after world, thinking that Jesus would disappear, they would not be able to take Jesus, this and that. He now saw that his master, his savior, was punished. He saw the way he was now being beaten. The Bible says that he took the money. It looks like repentance. But it was just being, just, you know, being, uh, uh, sorry, just regretted. He took the money, went back to the temple. He went to the high priest and said, take your money. You have made me to sin against the sinless one. You have made me to do what I am not supposed to do. I regret what, you know, all that I have done. Take your money. And the high priest and all the council said, what is that to us? Go and sort that one out. The body in your heart, the guilt conscience, the guilt in your heart. Go and sort it out by yourself. We have no solution to that. And because they were not ready to take this money, Pete, I mean, Judas Iscariot dropped the money in the temple. He dropped the money and he left. But unfortunately, he left to commit suicide. To kill himself. He sealed his doom. He's in hell as we are talking. He will continue to be in hell forever. Hallelujah. And the priest, they took the money. They said, this money is not no longer ordinary money. Do you know that the money that you bring to church 
Is someone listening to me? The money you bring to church has signature. When you bring money of beer selling, beer parlor, that money is not a good money. It is the same naira. It is the same, you know, that everybody is spending. But because the source of that money has polluted that particular money. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Ah, you are selling paraga. You are selling cigar. You are selling all those things. Or you are a prostitute. And you now get reward for your prostitution. And you now said that, ah, if anybody wants to give tithe, rise up. You are paying tithe from beer parlor business. That money is a stinking money. That money is not acceptable. That money is a polluted money. And that's why we preach the word of God in this church. So that don't bring polluted money to us. Yes, we need money. But not just any money. Because every money you bring to God's presence has signature. Is, that, is somebody getting it? Now, he brought that money. By the time they gave that money to him, it is not an ordinary money. Those he did not know, he thought that it was just every money that has maybe the description of uh, of who you know you know of Caesar that everybody spent. No, because they when he brought that money, they now said this money is the money of blood. Even the priests, the high priests, they said it is what is money of blood. Now today, is there money of blood? Money you get through kidnapping is money of blood. Money that you make through robbery is what? Money of blood. Money that you make through, you know, uh, adultery or fornication or whatever, selling your body is a money of blood. Money that you make through selling things that you are not supposed to sell, things that kills people, things that pollute lives of men, they are money of blood. They are not ordinary money. My question is that what kind of money do you spend? Is it the good money or is it the bad money? They say it's the money of blood. We can't put this one in the temple any longer. Don't forget, the money came out from the temple. But by the time it got to the hands of Peter, all right, the status, the signature of that money has changed. You think that the money that is taken from the, from the temple, when you bring money now, and you put offering, you pay tight. We use this money. We want to solve this problem. We want to do this in the church. We want to do this and that. Now, because it is a money that is accepted by God, it becomes a sanctified money, isn't it? If God will bless the 90% in your hands, definitely the one ten percent that is paid to the church is blessed. Is that not so? Now, it is used for the, for, for the propagation of the gospel. Anything we spend it for, is going to reproduce more. Praise the Lord. That is our faith. If the one in your hands is blessed, then the one that is put in the church also is blessed. But now the money that is in the church that is blessed, by the time that money is used to procure or to execute what has to do with evil, the signature of the money has changed. Peter got it. As I, I know, sorry, Judas, sorry. Judas got it. But this, the signature of that money has changed. When he brought it back, they could no longer put it in the temple. He said, this is the money of blood. Let's use it to go and buy burial ground, cemetery. Let's buy burial ground so that, in fact, we are not going to bury Jews there. Can you imagine? Even they themselves, they will not allow themselves to be buried in that burial ground. Because that burial ground itself is a polluted ground. Somebody following me? So because of that, they said, let's bury the strangers there. They will not know the history. Let's bury them there. I pray that you will not die in the wrong place. And you will not be buried in the polluted ground. You will not even be, be a build house in the polluted ground. You know, there are times you build house somewhere and evils begin to happen because that place, that place is a land of blood. Somebody has done Yahoo. He now acquired acres of land with all this estate, 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 and we don't know where they get their money from. <laughs> Praise God. Everybody is doing estate business. You know, wonderful name, beautiful name. They will acquire land. These are the, where did they get their money from? Many of them, it is through Yahoo, Yahoo, or Yahoo Plus, or it's through bloodshed, 
or it's through, you know what they get? Stealing the government money. They will now use this money and you now go and buy house there. My prayer is that anytime you are buying land, may you never buy land in a wrong place. Your amen is weak. You don't see it as important prayer. People build house in a wrong land and they begin to have problems all the days of their lives. Until deliverance is done. Some people you buy a house, some people you rent a place, and that is what brings troubles into your life. Why? The land that is bought with the money of blood, the blood will continue to cry on that particular land. So, it is the lessons we must learn about the resurrection. He died. He unfortunately, there was a room for repentance. Peter repented. Judas did not repent. Judas regretted. You know, today people regret. You think it is repentance? No, they only regretted. Ah! The money I've spent. Ah, Pastor, what you are saying is right. Praise God. I have a pastor in those days. He said he was preaching to one soldier, an old soldier who used to drink and drink to give his life to Christ. He said when he was when he was preaching, you know, and said, Ah, Pastor, you are right. The money that I've spent for beer and the gogoro is enough to buy land and build house. I said, you are right. Ah, I have wasted money. I wasted money. All that the preacher is saying, repent. Ah, he was telling the preacher, I said, I have heard you. See, I am a soldier man. Anything I say I will not do again, I will not do it again. I have strong will. I just regretted that. I mean, ah, I've sp- you know, he was regretting how he has wasted money. He was not repenting how what he has done as how he has sinned against the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Now, many people regret today. They say, ah, can you see the way he's weeping? Ah, you know, that message touched him. That message touched him. No, he's only regretting. He's regretting of gonorrhea that he has gotten through that sin. <laughs> Praise God. If somebody, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, ah, he said, ah, if I know all this HIV, I would not have gotten. He's only regretting of the sickness or the disease of the problem his sin has brought into his life. Not the way it has affected his God, his Lord. So eventually Jesus was crucified. And Jesus was, was crucified. They killed him. And the story we have read this morning is how he came back to life. The Bible says on the third day, the first day of the, of the week, which is Sunday like this, he rose up. Maybe some people have come to you, they said they are Seventh-day Adventists. And they want to tell you that we should be worshipping on Saturday. How many of you have heard that? They say it is Saturday, it is not Sunday. Because Sabbath, it is Saturday. So Saturday is day of rest. Don't mind them. They hear because they don't know the scriptures. Praise God. Everything about Sabbath ended in the Old Testament. Everything about Sabbath, the day of rest. Okay, the six, seven, the other rest said is the seventh day. Abi, you know, praise God. There is rest, which is Saturday. Now, okay, he rested on the seventh day, Sabbath. So it's actually the day we're supposed to rest. Uh, if it is a rest, why do they have to go to church? Maybe they should supposed to sleep in their house. Amen. It is just Judaism practice. And Jesus came to bring a new and the living way. The Bible says if the whole testament is not without fault, would not have created the new. So the, the, the old testament, now that we must worship on Saturday, it is Saturday. I remember when we went to Jerusalem and um, you know, they have to change the hotel. If it falls on Saturday, they have to change our hotel. And they were now telling all the reasons that, you know, some rich people, they have booked the hotel ahead. Because the day of Sabbath, you must not, fire must not, you must not cook in your house. Look at hypocrisy. Look, listen to where I'm going. You must not, there must not be fire in your house. You must not cook. You must not also even travel more than two miles. Amen. 
But those who have money, they will have gone and booked hotel. So they will move because Sabbath begins around 5 or 6 p.m. on Friday to 5 or 6 p.m. on Saturday. That is the period of Sabbath. So they will go and lodge in the hotel. Now when they get to the hotel, they will cook for them in the hotel. They will eat the food that is cooked. So let my, our sins be upon those who are cooking. Let us also be free. <laughs> Can you see human beings? Human beings, rich people, they are oppressor anywhere, anytime. She they supposed to stay in their house and begin to eat fruit alone for that period of uh, maybe 24 hours. Hallelujah. No, they will move to the hotel. So they will eat there. They will do everything they are. We are doing Sabbath. Lie. Under the New Testament, the apostles, the church, when the church was born, the church was born on the, I mean, the church, the first day of the week. That is when the church was born. Because that was the day Jesus resurrected. Praise God. So it is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is how it now came to the first day of the week, which is Sunday. But some of you become of Christians, if you don't know, we teach you some of these things. When you encounter Jehovah's Witness, you'll be able to understand the truth. If you encounter Seventh-day Adventists, there are people also today that are not Seventh-day Adventists who have changed their church to the system of worship of Seventh-day Adventists because they are confused. In the early church that we patterned to at our church, they were meeting first day of the week. In fact, they gathered together offering to help others the first day of the week. Shout hallelujah. So, Jesus rose. They went to the sepulchre. The women went to the sepulchre, but they discovered that the stone is rolled away. The Savior has resurrected. Jesus rose from the dead. Rose from the grave. Because death could not hold him captive. So, I want us to just understand one or two facts about this resurrection. By resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, redemption is procured for mankind. Because in the book of um, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. There is no remission of sins if there is no shedding of the blood. Somebody follow me? And in 2 Corinthians 5 21, said, For he had made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? Jesus was made sin. Who knew no sin? So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And through this, this redemption that is purchased for us, now we have redemption from sin. Through redemption, the de redemption means Jesus Christ taking our place. All right? He shed his blood to take our place. Redemption from sin is, is procured for us. Redemption from sickness and disease is also procured for us. First Peter 2 Peter 2.24 says, First Peter chapter 2 verse 24, as recorded also in the book of Isaiah 53 verse 5, but First Peter 2 Peter 2.24 says, For who is own self, <coughs> self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, we should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. By the beating and the nailing of Jesus Christ on the cross, we receive healing from sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. And of course, that through this redemption, <clears throat> we are free from the causes. Like I used to say, that um, Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law because being made a cause for us, it is written, cause is everyone that is hanged on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of <clears throat> faith through, of the spirit through faith. So, we are having, we have access to redemption which redeem us from all causes. Because the Jesus was nailed on the cross and because of that, it is written, everyone that is hung on the cross is caused. So, he took our cause so that we might have the blessing. And of course, we are redeemed from shame. We are redeemed from poverty. 
also, and we are redeemed from shame. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus Christ died poor. Praise the Lord. So that we might be rich. So he, that is what redemption is talking about. That is what Irakwada, redemption, he took our place so that we can have the blessings because he shed his blood. Praise the Lord. And of course, resurrection of Jesus Christ now give us victory over death according to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54 to 55. Now, he gives us victory over the dead. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Praise God. The grave cannot hold Jesus captive. He rose up and we are saying that this gave us also victory over all circumstances of life. My prayer today for you, whatever is holding you bound, I pray that they will lose their power. Amen. So whatever is holding you or buried your life and destiny, shall, they shall lose power over your life in Jesus' name. Because death could not hold Jesus captive. Death has held people captive for ages. Anybody that die, he will not resurrect. All the religious leaders, whatever you call them, they will not resurrect. They, they are dead. They are dead. Until the day of judgment. For Jesus Christ, he, well, he died and he came back. Not because somebody prayed for him to rise like Lazarus, okay? But he died. He was buried. He came back to life. He has victory over death. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, you also, you have victory over death. Hallelujah. And that is why we have a living hope. We have hope for the future. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 5. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 5. Say, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, can you see now? We have hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible on the fire that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. We are kept by the power of God and we are kept for the future. Hope of the future. Hope of better resurrection. Hope of the kingdom of God. Hope of reigning with Jesus. We are kept by the power of God. The power of resurrection preserves us. We have hope for the future. The Bible says, if it is only in this world we have hope, we are the most wretched among all men. If you think that everything hangs in this world, sorry, the world has no, has no attraction. There is nothing special in this world. Amen. Praise God. For example, all these, our children, food is important to them. But when you begin to get to 50 above, food is nothing to you. I mean, if you understand what I'm saying. Food is nothing to you. When you now begin to grow older, older, you know all those, all those uh, uh, people in the 18, 19, they will look at you the way you are eating. They wish they could eat like the way you are eating. They will smile. They have eaten before. But now, their body is... The heart is calling for their body. I don't know what I understand. They know they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are going back to where they came from. Food is no longer important. All the nutrition now, whatever, it is no longer important. They will just eat little and they are okay. Because, you don't know, food is, to young people, food is important. But old people, you know, praise God. Even by the time you even get to the age of 35, 40, you begin to, the year of food begin to fade away gradually. Hallelujah. Because it is time of work. You walk, you forget that you have not eaten. But all these children that you see, they are, in fact, they will eat, <laughs> they will eat three times nine. They will say, mommy, I have not eaten. Children, am I right? They will forget, parents, you know, they will forget that they have eaten. They say, I have not eaten my afternoon food. Ah. 
He said, I have not eaten my half. What the, the one you ate the other time? He said, Did I really eat? I have not eaten my half. No, Jare. Mommy, I need my half to no food. Praise God. Hallelujah. They lose count of how many times they eat. Anytime you give them, the stomach is available. As small as it is, they want to propose something there. So, there is not. Is the house you are talking about? You won't stay inside more than one room. If the house is too big, one day the, the big house will become a problem to you. You've got to clean a big house. When your wife says, mm -mm, and go and tell me, where is house if you want to use now? It is not. Some people, when they now build a house, they will now go and look for someone. They want to work on the duplex that is important to them. Because they are less cannot climb staircase every morning. But in those days, duplex, they want to showcase their duplex. But today, it is nothing. Nothing. There is nothing in this world. But when you have Jesus and you have the hope of eternal life, I have a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I have a home in glory land that outshine the sun. I have a home in glory land that outshine the sun way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me way beyond the blues. I made Jesus my Savior, you make him too. I make Jesus my Savior, you make him too. I have home in glory land that outshine the sun way beyond there is something glorious ahead of us there is something beautiful ahead of us heaven is going to be a great place make sure you don't miss it heaven is more than important to this world shout hallelujah you look at this one you know at times people will run from nigeria they say america america get Britain. When you get there, they will be complaining. They're so hot here. When they get there, the cold said the cold can kill. I'm having bone. I, my, my bones are cracked. Praise God. You say you want to go. You are there. Now you complain. You are in Nigeria. You complain. Praise God. You get over there. People will say complain. When the weather that is ash that you are not used to, begin to bite you, begin to deal with you. Amen. All the clothes that you have, you look, look at me, we are in Agbada now. Praise God. Now, how many times can you wear our Agbada in America or Britain? You can count the times. Amen. Because you will, you, will, you will have to dress like a masquerade. You put and put and put. So the beauty of your clothes will not be seen outside. All those things, they say, ah, it is fire, it is a uh, kinikan. It is a uh, Ferrari. It is uh, I don't know whatever all these uh, you know, special designers. Now I say this and that. You want to showcase it? It is Gucci. You can't see the Gucci outside because you know coat upon coat will cover the Gucci. The beauty will not be seen. It is here you can do shakara. So what you have, they don't have. What they have, you don't have. So God is the God of all they have. But there is somewhere that is more glorious. That is what Jesus Christ, why he resurrected. He said he's going to prepare a place for us. After that, he will come back to take us to himself. That where he is, we might be there also. There is nothing important in this world. So we must be conscious of the fact that we have a hope. I want to stop here. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. On a day like this, that the power of resurrection will work in your life. And if there is anything that is holding you bound, they must lose you and allow you to go. If there is anything that is buried in your destiny, the power, let me read that scripture before I close. That is Romans, um, Romans, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. 
He said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. He said, this is a blessing. That since Jesus Christ came back from the grave by the power of the Holy Spirit, that that same spirit can also quicken your mortal body. If you are sick, your body can be quickened. If anything is dying in your body, it can come back to life. If anything is dead or dying in your destiny, it can come back to life. He said the same spirit will quicken your mortal body. That is the power of resurrection. That's what resurrection is all about. That things will change position. Things will change location. And that's why the angel asks, they say, why are you seeking what? The living among the dead. He is not here. This is the region of dead. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? According to what he told you. And the Bible said they remember this word. He has told them but they forgot. But then they remember his word that he has told them. That on the third day he will rise up. Say, you are seeking the living among the dead. My prayer for you. We are people used to find you. They will see you there no longer. Frustrated. Battered. Cheated. Discouraged. There are groups of people like that. People who have woes in the area stories of marriage. Your story will change. I say your story will change. I don't know how God will do it, but there is a power that relocates, that changes stories of man. No matter how messed up a situation is, when this same power enters into that place that as where you are confined to, it will reposition you. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for the fruit of the womb. I want to have it. It is the same power that raised Jesus. It will quicken you. It will change your position. It will change your life. He has solution. So I'm telling you today, resurrection is a, is a message of hope. Don't lose hope. That power is available. I've told you, don't think how will God do it. You don't bother yourself. All yours is that concerns is that I want solution about my life. I want solution about my life. I want solution about my destiny. Oh, they say there is no job. That is the general. It is a position some people find themselves. But when the power of resurrection relocates you, you will not be among those people that do not have job. People who are finding it difficult to, to exist or to live because the power of resurrection changes people's location, changes your position. You become, you know, a new person. People where they have been seeing you, they will see you there no more. So why are you seeking the living among the dead you are a living soul you cannot suffer what others are suffering oh yes there are times of trials and temptation it's for a while jesus was tried until he was killed it is for a while but when he rose from the dead the story changed he could no longer be killed he rose up he ascended to heaven and it's coming back again hallelujah that is the power of resurrection it calls for us to celebrate, to rejoice, because the provisions for our deliverance, for our salvation has been made. Shall we rise to our feet this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to talk two prayers. Number one, dedicate yourself to God. Say, Jesus, I dedicate my life to you this morning. If you know you are not walking right, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I surrender my life. Forgive me my sins. I surrender. I'm ready to follow you. I'm ready to follow you. I'm ready to do your will. Lord, I receive grace. Receive grace this morning. Receive grace this morning. Receive grace this morning. Lord Jesus, I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Let the power of resurrection deliver me from the power of sin. Let the power of resurrection deliver me from the power of sin. Let the power of resurrection redeem me. Let the power of resurrection transform me. Let the power of resurrection redeem me. 
Let the power of resurrection transform me. Begin to pray in Jesus' name. I say, Lord Jesus, I dedicate me. You must love Jesus. Do you love him? If you love him, you will serve him. If you love him, you will be available for him. If you have not been walking rightly, say God from today, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. And pray that God hold me till the end. He's coming to take us home. Whether we are alive, we'll be raptured. Even if we are dead physically in this world, resurrection day is coming. We shall see rise. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercies and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be when, when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all when we all when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be I want you to pray the second prayer. Pray that God, the power that changed the location of Jesus, let the location of my life be changed this morning. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has remained for a very long time, kept you in one position, let the power of resurrection relocate you to a greater height, to a level of testimony. What people know you for, that they will no longer see you there. Situation that life has confined you into, let the power of resurrection sort you out. Anything you want from the Lord, tell God right now. I want Easter blessing, Easter press, Easter. Uh, blessing is that gift oh lord let the power of resurrection raise me up spiritually raise me up physically raise me up in my health let you raise me up in my finances let you raise me up every situation that has buried my life let the power of resurrection bring me out whatever is buried let it come alive there are some of you you see your intellectual capacity is dead Ask for the power of God to quicken your brain so that you can think out of the box. Things you have to do that can bring prosperity, that can bring you into the new light. When you ask from him, he will answer you. You don't know what to do. He knows what to do. Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit power that raised Jesus from the dead to intervene in your marriage, to intervene in your family life, to intervene in your workplace, to intervene in your business. It is the blessing of Easter. The resurrection affords a change of position, a change of life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can you just stretch out your hand to the altar? Let's pray. As a contact point, Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We talk about the resurrection, what you have done, and that if Jesus rose from the dead, we also 
we shall rise. I pray God Almighty, so many things have been talked about. I pray that the repentance of your people this morning will not be like that of Judas Iscariot. It shall be a repentance like that of Peter and that he receive forgiveness. Pray for everything that the enemy is condemning anybody for. Father, let there be, let there be forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be transformation. Let there be redemption by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray, oh God, the resurrection is to bring a change of position. So that where we used to be, we shall no longer be there. Father, I pray, Lord Jehovah, for a change of position, change of status. For your people, Lord, let there be a change of status. Let there be a change of position in the name of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection, Lord, afford us to come out from the grave where we are buried i pray today that whatever is buried in the life of anyone in their home in their personal life and destiny i ask the power of the spirit to bring them out let the power of resurrection quicken them as jesus rose rise in the name of jesus from today rise in the name of jesus rise and begin to shine take your place in destiny the bible says jesus died he rose to die no more i prayed for you today you will die no more what it means is that you will not be involved in second death that is cut off from god forever i pray in the name of god the second death will not have power over your life in the name of jesus let there be divine intervention let there be a lifting let there be a blessing of easter for every life for every home for our children in the name of jesus christ Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.